There is a myth of Kerala, one that says you can lease or buy one and basically forget about it, even when you re-driving it. It will be faithful transportation year in and year out until you decide to step up to another, newer Kerala, and hey, you will probably be able to get a decent trade in on your present one when you decide to do so. The myth is backed up by tens of millions of cars sold globally over the past five decades, countless satisfied Kerala families, plus pretty decent residuals. So there must be something to it. As this 2017 Kerala XLE demonstrates, though, everything that makes the car a perfect fit for people who need a car but don't want to spend too much time fussing about the choice, or the ownership experience, also makes it pretty dang boring for the rest of us. Yeah, I know, ripping the Kerala for being a bland beige box is so facile, so obvious. So what? It is probably the best bland beige box on the market. There is real value in that. Scrutinize it through non-enthusiast eyes and there is not much to hate, except maybe the less than comfortable seats, I cooled and find a comfortable position, and I am not picky. For under $25,000, you can option out a nice Kerala XSE and never spend another waking moment thinking about how you re going to get to work in the morning. Aside from the general lack of character, which I am beginning to suspect may be a feature, not a bug, the biggest complaint here is the buzzy CVT. It whines and drones mightily, but the noise do s and t really translate to forward speed. Acceleration is adequate, but that s it, come to think of it, adequate is a great word for this car. Sifting through the memory banks, it seems like the last Corolla I drove had a six-speed manual transmission. I suspect that this isn't exactly a car the average user wants to connect with, no more than they would want to connect with their microwave at least, but if you're re-looking to give your Corolla driving experience a little bit of a fun factor, the manual is the way to go. The biggest question for me is why anyone would choose this over a new Honda Civic, or even a Ford Focus or Nissan Sentra, all of which can be more fun to drive, and all of which are comparably priced. I am not saying all of those are indisputably better than the Corolla, the Civic is out front by virtue of its recent ground-up redesign, I am just asking why Corolla has always been the default choice, 